So welcome, my name is Akos Hajdu, and in this talk I'm going to present our work on formally specifying and verifying Solidity smart contracts uh, that use events. And this is a work done with uh, Diane and Gabriella from uh, SRI. So let's start with a little bit of context. Basically, Solidity is the main programming language for uh, writing uh, smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain. As an example, consider a typical token which uh, has a fixed amount of uh, total supply and that which keeps track of individual uh, user balances. Uh, usually there is a constructor which is parameterized by the uh, total amount and which gives all uh, the tokens uh, to the creator. And, uh, there is also usually a transfer function uh, which can transfer a given amount of uh, tokens to a given uh, receiver by uh, reducing the balance of the sender and increasing the balance of uh, the receiver. Now, as a logging and notification mechanism, Solidity provides events. For example, um, we can declare an initialized and a transferred event with some um, relevant arguments. Then, for example, in the constructor, we can emit uh, the initialized event uh, with the creator and the total amount. And for example, in transfer, we can emit uh, the transferred event, uh, which will tell uh, who transferred to which receiver and what amount. Now, events in Solidity or in the blockchain uh, can be considered as a special logging mechanism. Each uh, emitted event is stored in blockchain logs along with uh, their arguments. And while these logs are not accessible programmatically from other smart contracts, uh, users or services above the blockchain can uh, observe them to get notified about important state changes. For example, a token exchange service might uh, monitor the state of various tokens uh, with these events. And since Ethereum is a pub public blockchain, users could also just uh, run a blockchain node and replay uh, the transactions. However, this would often give just too much details. Uh, so instead, events can provide an abstract view uh, of the execution, only the relevant aspects for, uh, for each user. Now, the big question is, uh, can we trust uh, these emitted events? Can we rely on them in the sense that uh, the abstract view is consistent with the internal execution and the internal state uh, of the contract. Uh, for the token example, we should ask ourselves, do we always emit if the balances change? Or from the other direction, if we emit, uh, was there really a change? Or uh, did, we, did we provide the proper arguments for the event? Like if the event says that 100 tokens were transferred, was it really 100? Uh, in the actual execution? And the short answer to this question is, well, not really. Event and emitting event uh, is code written by humans, written by developers, and just as any code, it can be buggy. So to catch such bugs, we provide a specification and verification approach for contracts that use events. Um, we do this with the means of uh, in-code annotations that are written above events and functions. Uh, first of all, events can declare a set of state variables that they track for changes. This basically means that uh, the event should be emitted if and only if uh, there was a change in some tracked uh, variables. Uh, Considering the token example with its uh, state variables and its events, uh, for example, uh, initialized uh, tracks 
both uh, the balances and both the total uh, state variable, whereas the transferred event only tracks uh, the balances because uh, total does not change uh, after initialization. So you can see that these uh, annotations are provided as uh, special uh, comments with these uh, notice uh, tracks changes in. Then functions can also be specified with uh, the events that they can possibly emit, that they are allowed to emit. This is basically similar to declaring potential exceptions for Java. Uh, for example, we have the constructor and the transfer function from the token here, and we could say that uh, the constructor is allowed to emit uh, initialized, and the transfer is allowed to emit uh, transferred. And again, these are provided as special annotations written above the functions. And finally, to actually establish the correspondence between the abstract view that, are, uh, that is provided by the events and the actual internal execution, we allow events uh, to be annotated with pre and post conditions. These are basically predicates that must hold before the change and at the point of the emit statement. And I will get back to what uh, before precisely means uh, in a moment. Uh, for example, uh, the precondition of uh, the initialized event says uh, that the creator should have zero tokens because we are just about to initialize. And afterwards, uh, the two uh, post conditions uh, state that the creator should get all the tokens and uh, the total um, state variable should also be uh, properly initialized. And then, for example, for transfer, the precondition states uh, that there should be enough uh, tokens to make uh, the transfer, and then the post conditions uh, state that uh, the uh, sender balance was uh, reduced and the receiver balance was increased. And we can also use this special before function uh, to refer uh, to the previous state uh, of a state variable, which I am going to uh, discuss in more detail soon. But uh, before actually diving into the details on how we do the verification, let me show you a little demo on uh, what we can actually do uh, with these uh, specs. So let me just open up my virtual machine where you can see uh, the token example in full. You can see the two events uh, with the specs and you can also see the two uh, function with its uh, specs. So now if I run uh, the verification tool which we call Saucy Verify, I will introduce that in a moment. So if I run it on this example um, it will tell that everything is okay, both uh, functions are fine, no errors are found. Uh, so let's now see what happens if I, for example, forget uh, to emit an event. In this case, the tool uh, will be able to tell us that, oh, this constructor uh, ended without actually uh, triggering uh, the event. But we can also see that if I fix this now and I, for example, forget to actually make any change, uh, then the verifier will be able to report that there was an event triggered without actually changing uh, the tracked data. Um, we can also see that, for example, if I forget to declare that I'm emitting an event, I also get actually a compile time error which says that uh, this function can emit this event, but it does not uh, specify it. Um, and also, for example, if I uh, mess up the arguments, I say that I've transferred from the sender to the sender, uh, the tool will be also able to tell uh, that the post condition 
is uh, is wrong it uh, it might not hold yes so let's just uh, fix this and check if everything is fine yes so let's now get back to uh, the presentation um, so as you've seen uh, um, we could perform uh, formal verification over these contracts uh, with the specs and in order to do so to perform formal verification there was actually there were actually two main questions that we had to address the first is uh, where uh, should we actually check if an event um, has been emitted um, because we cannot uh, check it right after every change because some changes can occur in multiple steps for example in this token example uh, decreasing and increasing the balance actually uh, took uh, two steps and the other question is uh, where to check the preconditions because post conditions are clear they are checked at the point at the emit at the point of the emit statement but what about preconditions what does uh, before the change exactly mean to address these questions we came up with the concept of a checkpoint so you can see the transfer function here again and let's now assume that there are some statements uh, in between represented by these dots that are not uh, relevant for this uh, event and for these state variables but there can be some extra uh, statements um, we define two kinds of uh, checkpoints uh, the first one is the before checkpoint uh, which is a dynamic checkpoint for each event basically <clears throat> a before checkpoint uh, marks the first time that a tracked variable uh, changes and here we also save its value so that later when we actually arrive at the uh, emit we can uh, um, we can check these values for for the preconditions or also in the post conditions we can refer to it uh, with this special before function as you've seen <coughs> previously the other kind of checkpoint is the after checkpoint which is basically a static barrier this is the latest point where we should fulfill our obligations uh, with emitting for example um, naturally uh, the end of the function is is an after checkpoint we should not be in depth uh, with events after uh, returning and with this concept introduced we can now actually define uh, what to do at an emit statement basically we have to first uh, check the pre and post conditions uh, and then by relying on the uh, saved values and then we also we should also uh, clear uh, these uh, these checkpoints so if the function continues and modifies uh, some of the tracked variables again then uh, there will be new before and after checkpoints introduced now um, let me now present an overview of uh, the verification approach which is actually implemented in the Solsi verify tool which you can find on github and this is also the one that you've seen uh, in the demo so first we take uh, the solidity contract which is annotated with these encode annotations for specifying events we use an extended version of the solidity compiler to traverse uh, the contract and uh, to produce a boogie program boogie is an intermediate verification language which is based on smt solvers and the important thing is that based on the annotations we instrument uh, this program uh, with uh, with the checks that are required for verification and i'm going to discuss this uh, instrumentation soon um, in more detail uh, and then this program can be given to the uh, boogie verifier which will generate verification conditions to be checked by smt solvers and the solvers will uh, prove that the program is correct or if it is incorrect and we also uh, back annotate these results uh, to the original contract 
as you've seen <clears throat> in the demo, we were receiving uh, error messages related to, to the original contract. So to actually uh, make these uh, checks work, uh, we instrument the code with the extra bookkeeping required and also with some extra assertions that should be checked uh, by the verifier. And we actually do this inside the verifier, but uh, conceptually it can also be presented on the solidity level. So here we have the uh, transfer function for the token again, and uh, the balances state variable, which is relevant for this function. And uh, first of all, we define two helper variables for, uh, for each tracked uh, variable. There is one Boolean flag uh, to keep track whether the variable has changed, changed uh, since the last emit. And there is also one with the same type uh, to save the old value. When entering a function, we require the variable, uh, the flag, not to be modified because we should not be in depth uh, with any event when we call a new function, basically when we start a new transaction. And then before each uh, modification, we check whether it's the first modification. Uh, and if yes, uh, we save the data and we also set uh, the flag, which will basically dynamically uh, introduce a before checkpoint. In this example, actually this first modification will introduce the before checkpoint and the next one will, will just pass because the condition will not hold. Then when we actually do the emit, we do, uh, uh, we do we insert the checks. First, we check whether there was indeed a change. Uh, then we check uh, the preconditions with, uh, with the old values. Uh, and we also check uh, the post conditions with the current, current values or possibly the old values if we refer to them with this before uh, function. And we also clear uh, the flag. So finally, uh, at the end of the function, there is an after checkpoint, there is a static barrier, which will assert that there was no uh, modification, which was not cleared by some of the events. So just a little bit of discussion. Um, verification is done with our tool, Solsi Verify, which is a modular verifier based on uh, Boogie and SMT solvers, and it also supports a lot more uh, kinds of specs like uh, invariants and pre and post conditions and so on. Um, but actually, the presented approach, as you've seen in the instrumentation, can work with any, any verifier that can do this kind of instrumentation and uh, that uh, supports checking assertions like, for example, uh, bounded model checking or, or symbolic execution could also work on this uh, instrumented code. And one thing to, to also note is that uh, after checkpoints depend on the verification approach. Uh, with modular verification, for example, we have to replace loops with the invariants. So loop boundaries also have to be uh, after checkpoints. Uh, but this might not be a limitation with, with alternative uh, verification approaches. So to summarize, uh, events in Solidity are often used uh, to provide an abstract view of the actual execution and the internal state. And so because of this, we have to trust that they are correctly emitted and that they faithfully represent the internal state. So we provide a specification and verification approach using encode annotations and we perform verification by defining uh, checkpoints and by instrumenting the code. And for more details, you can check out uh, the paper and you can also check out our tool on GitHub. So thank you for listening.